Hey, hey, Obi. Hey, what's up? What are you doing in the dark, man? Nothing, just the late night filings. Really? The late night filing? What are you, a Russian spy or something? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll catch you later. Yeah. yeah. Принесло. Да, шик распалили. The following is a special presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Over 120 countries have asked permission to use an image of his likeness on their currency. He was Ian Fleming's first choice to play James Bond. Melrose. Barry Melrose. He enjoys reading Tolstoy, playing chess, and stimulating conversation. What is the meaning of life? Simultaneously, he is the world's most interesting analyst. I don't always break down the Stanley Cup Finals, but when I do, I prefer sports center. Stay tuned, my friends. Have you ever heard of Barry Melrose? Everyone knows Barry Melrose. Gotta get your hockey knowledge and your hair knowledge. Uh, Brad Shook, an expert in both areas. Have you, have you seen Brad Shook? Who's laughing? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Paul, yes, it's not in this video that we're going to follow. Paul's right challenge, we say. When I was, uh, had long hair like that, I was a toast to the NHL. I went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I was the greatest coach in the history of the game. As soon as I got a haircut, bang. Broken for ESPN. Really getting stupider every year. That's a coach saying, man, you look good with that haircut. There's nothing like the bench. Oh, here we go, here we go. You miss the smell, the feeling, the coldness of the ice. Oh, boy, yeah, yeah. Throw off my bench. I got things going good here. Outstanding former National Hockey League defenseman. How about a warm welcome for the Hall of Famer, Brian Leach. <laughs> Melrose? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is, this is so embarrassing for me. Apparently Brian Leach is not here today. Instead, you get the man you just saw in all those clips. I'm told that was sort of a best of Barry Melrose. Melrose. Think about that for a second. The best of Barry Melrose. Hysterical, right? Before many of you came to know Barry as ESPN's NHL analyst, he put together a very, very average 11-year playing career in the NHL and WHA. After his playing days ended, Barry moved behind the bench where he found success. And Wayne Gretzky. Talk about timing. As a rookie NHL head coach, Barry took the Kings with a little help from the guy in uniform number 99 to their first ever Stanley Cup final in 1993. Don't ask him about Marty McSorley's stick. Kind of a sore subject. Barry joined ESPN in 1996 and in 2004, he made me his partner as we became the owners of the Adirondack Frostbite in the United Hockey League. And together, we lost millions. <laughs> he is still one of my favorite people on the planet. So please tap your sticks Clap your hands to welcome one of the real good guys in the game, Mr. Barry Melrose. We could spend a lot more time talking about my hockey career. Let's <laughs> keep it short. Uh, who in here uh, is an athlete? All you guys play sports? Yeah. Most hockey players? Is all you, a lot of hockey players in here? Yeah. Actually, uh, I came here in uh, 1993. I was coaching the LA Kings, and uh, we practiced here uh, at the arena. Couldn't get ice and hard for some reason. We were playing the Whalers that night. 
And we came here, practiced here. Gretzky skated here. Yari Curry skated here. Paul Coffey skated here. And uh, I was just telling uh, Norby on the way here that, that we should have made a point of practicing here more often because we hammered hard for that night, seven nothing. I think Gretzky got five points. So uh, it's been a very good ring to us. Uh, and when I when I I'm from Canada and uh, uh, you know just a product of the public school system up there. And, and uh, when I came in here on the bus, uh, what struck me is. This place looked like I thought a prep school should look, you know, with the, the stone and the, and the, the turrets and the, uh, the castle looking uh, you know, image of it. Uh, it. It really looked like a cool place, a really neat place. So uh, I, really, uh, I really thought it was a beautiful place and obviously it's been a great school and it's been a great hockey school. Uh, from hockey stories, uh, and nicknames, you guys all have a nickname? Everybody's got nicknames, the red haired guy's called Sparky or, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, you know, everyone, everyone's got a you know, nickname. If you got a real hairy back, they usually call you Bear or something like that. <laughs> um, best nickname I ever heard. I'm coaching in LA, we just called this kid up in the minors. And we had the morning skate that morning. And, uh, all the older guys were skating around. This kid was practicing and uh, he'd touch the puck and they'd say, two people up the wall. And then uh, he'd get behind the net and uh, one of the other guys yelled, two people, drop him behind the net. Uh, two people, drop him behind you. Things like that. So uh, they call this kid two people all practice long. So at the end of practice, I turned to Charlie Huddy, one of the veterans on the team, and said, Charlie, why do you call that kid two people? And Charlie turns to me and says, Barry, you one person can't be that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm playing in Toronto and playing is the, playing is the greatest thing in the world. Coaching is awesome, and what I do at ESPN is awesome. But uh, playing is the greatest thing in the world. You guys, whether this is your last hockey you play or whether you move on, whatever, playing is the greatest job in the world.